Hey everyone, welcome back to Portal of Wisdom. I'm back today with another story for you. If you are new to the channel, like and subscribe and click that little post notification bell so you get alerted when I post new videos. And now on to today's topic. Today we are going to talk about Roy Gardner. He was a train robber in the U.S. He's kind of considered the last great American train robber of that train robbery era and he was a heck of a train robber and prison escapee that's for sure. So we'll start out with Roy's early days. He was born in 1884. I believe he was born in Trenton, Missouri. He didn't start uh, you know uh, becoming a train robber until the early 1920s. So he spent a lot of his early adulthood wandering the Southwest, and at, at some point he did get married, and he did have a daughter. I believe his daughter's name was Jean. So we're going to go over the account of all the things that, crazy things that happened in his life, and uh, we'll use some details too. There's a few people that have uh, done some pretty good research on his life and his crimes and stuff and uh, Kathy Alexander has a pretty good account of a lot of things that he did in his life so uh, we will go over those details now. So on April 16th of 1920 Roy stole $78,000 in cash and securities from a mail truck in San Diego, California and though it was a smooth job, he was actually arrested three days later. And soon his name would become as well known in that era as the names like Jesse James or some of those guys that had national recognition. So he was sentenced to 25 years in McNeil Island Federal Penitentiary near Tacoma, Washington. And Gardner vowed to never serve the sentence, even though no one had ever successfully escaped from this high security uh, prison. And I believe it was, you know, on an island in Puget Sound, so it was difficult to escape from. On June 5th of 1920... Gardner was going to Washington on a train to serve his sentence, and when he and two other prisoners were being returned from the dining car to their compartment, the outlaws attacked the guards and escaped, so he didn't make it to prison this time. On May 19th of 1921, Gardner boarded a mail car of a Southern Pacific train and tied up the clerk, and he fled the train in Roseville, California with $187,000 in cash and securities. So, two days later, Gardner was arrested again while he was playing a game of cards in Roseville, California in a pool hall there. So it sounds like he really didn't make much of an escape. He just was uh, found in town playing pool in the pool hall. And attempting to reduce his long sentence, he offered to lead the lawmen to the money. However, it was said he must have changed his mind because after leading the officers on a wild goose chase of the surrounding hills, he announced, I guess I've forgotten where I buried the money. And uh, anyhow, so they didn't find that money at that point, And that might have been his plan all along. But Gardner was given an additional 25 years at McNeil's Island in Washington. And on June 10th, so Gardner found himself heavily shackled on the train on the way to McNeil Island again. And he was with U.S. Marshals Mulhall and Rinkel. And they were both, you know, very fast shooting veterans. And this is why they were put with him. And Gardner had asked to use the bathroom. And he went into the bathroom and I guess an associate had put a 32 caliber pistol in the bathroom for Gardner. So when he came out of the bathroom, he pointed a gun at, at the U.S. Marshals and ordered another prisoner to handcuff the two lawmen together and to the seat. 
and he took the officer's weapons, he took some cash, and he hopped onto another moving train outside of Castle Rock, Washington. So, of course, there's a big manhunt now going up and down the Pacific Coast um, after his escape again. And he was described as a dangerous man who would shoot on sight and must be captured at all costs. So they put a $5,000 bounty on his head at that point. And when he arrived in Centralia, Washington, he was almost recognized right away. But Gardner had put on his face a bunch of bandages and stuff to try to hide his identity. And uh, just left, I guess, enough... Enough... Uh, of a slit in the bandages for him to see and be able to walk around but conceal his face. So he goes to the Oxford Hotel and tries to get a room and he claims he's been burned in an industrial accident near Tacoma and the hotel proprietor is a little suspicious of the bandaged guy and and so apparently um, they had called the police and and they come to the hotel and, and they eventually find out that, yes, this is Gardner and, and he's taken away and he's sentenced to another 25 years and heavily chained again. And he's finally brought to McNeil Island and finally sets foot on this island prison. So he's only in prison here for six weeks at this point. And he convinced a couple of prisoners, Lewardus Bogart and Everett Impen, that he had paid off guards in the tower. And so it's Labor Day, September 5th, 1921, and there's a prison baseball game going on right now between two different prison teams. And Gardner says to the two gentlemen sitting with him, he says, now, and... He says this when a fly ball is getting hit to center field and everyone has their eyes on the ball, even the guards in the towers. And so they run when no one is looking and they escape through a hole in the fence that um, Gardner had already cut in preparation for this, uh, for this escape. So Bogart and Impen and... Gardner, they ran about 300 yards to the barbed wire fence. They escaped through the hole, and they're running into the pasture. Bullets are starting to fly over their heads and all around them, and Gardner's hitting the, the leg, but he escaped behind a herd of cattle and then into some timber, and he saw Bogart fall badly wounded, and Impen was shot dead, and his dying words were, Gardner told us these fellows in the towers couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. So Bogart later said that Gardner had deceived them and, and used the both of them as decoys to better his chance of escape. So the guards scoured the beaches, they confiscated the boats on the shoreline, they're looking all over for Gardner, and they can't, they can't find him. And I believe a, a few days go by and they still don't find him. They don't know where he is, what's going on. They were unable to find Gardner because at this point he was living in a prison barn and he was drinking milk from the cows. And after a little while hiding out there, he swam to Fox Island where he lived off of fruit in the orchards and then he eventually escaped. So the warden of the prison, Warden Maloney, he believed that there was no way Gardner could have escaped the island. But as two more days passed, and not a single trace of Gardner could be found, they began to think a little differently. So two more weeks passed, and the authorities had to admit that Gardner had probably gotten off the island somehow. And newspapers called him the Smiling Bandit, along with... Um, along with the king of the escape artists. So he was making a name for himself at this point. So nothing more was heard from Gardner until November 3rd, 1921. So if you keep in mind, he escaped on Labor Day, early September, and uh, about two months later before anything is possibly heard from him. So on November 3rd, 1921... There was a lone bandit that held up a Southern Pacific train at Maricopa, Arizona. 
Uh, it said, though nothing was taken, the mail clerk thought it was Gardner. So they weren't positive then. They thought it was Gardner. No one knew for sure. You know, probably other people at this point think, oh, maybe he drowned trying to get off the island or something like that. So no one knows for sure at this point. Um, a couple of weeks later, on November 15th of 1921, Gardner attempted to hold up a mail train in Phoenix, Arizona. So same area a couple of weeks later. Uh, but the mail clerk was a big, powerful man, and he fought back, and the gun was just discharged, but no one was hit. This time, there would be no escape. So Gardner didn't get away, and they determined, yes, this was Gardner. He did get away from the prison prior, and he got another 25 years added to his sentence, and he was taken to Leavenworth, Kansas Federal Penitentiary. But he was later moved to the Atlanta Federal Prison, and while there, he attempted yet another escape, and this one was unsuccessful, and he paid for it, um, it was said, with 20 months of solitary confinement. And when he came out of the hole, he was crazy, and he ended up spending time in the St. Elizabeth's Hospital for the Insane at Washington, D.C. So it, I don't know how long he was there, but it was said he was later removed and sent to Alcatraz to complete his sentence. And during his time at Alcatraz, his wife divorced him. So Gardner made several attempts for clemency, but was not released until 1938. And in 1939, he published his autobiography, Helcatraz. And in January the following year of, of 1940, he did end his own life in a small hotel room in San Francisco, explaining that men who served more than five years in prison were doomed and that he was old and tired. It really kind of has parallels and reminds you of Shawshank Redemption, doesn't it? When uh, Brooks was pretty old and he got out and and uh, he just felt like there wasn't a place in the world for an old, tired prisoner. So it, it really uh, seems to kind of paint that same picture. But this ended a criminal career where it was estimated that about $250,000 of his loot still remains hidden various places that Gardner operated out in the western United States. So he had neither the time nor the opportunity to spend it, and uh, he was in prison a, a good chunk of time. And his wife divorced him, and, and uh, there's probably still plenty of treasures out there. Of course, paper money may have... Uh, you know, rotted away by now, but if there were coins and gold pieces and silver coins and stuff like that, there could be some some really good, uh, you know, treasure out there still. So history will remember Roy Gardner as the last great American train robber. And uh, the one of the legends of more of a precise location for, for a, uh, one of his robberies or treasures is... Uh, said that he hid around $16,000 in gold coins in the cone of an extinct volcano near Flagstaff, Arizona, before he was captured during a train robbery in 1921. So there are a lot of areas he operated in, but that is one of them that uh, is a more precise area, and I don't know that anyone has ever, ever found that yet. So... Anyhow, there could be other treasures in, you know, California, Washington, Arizona, other places that he robbed trains, and uh, there might still be some stuff out there that can be found if people look in the right place. So that is the story of Roy Gardner, the last great American train robber.